Well, hello. I'm just looking at myself in my preview here, and I noticed I'm wearing a plaid shirt on a plaid couch. So I don't know if you see anything from my head down. Uh, <laughs> fashion isn't really my thing, as you can tell from everything you see here. Okay, so enough about clothes. I'm here today to talk about one of my favorite pens, the Noodler's Conrad. Now, how much do I like the Noodler's Conrad? Well, let's look over here. What do we have? <laughs> Enough Noodler's Conrads that I can't hold them all in my hand. Look at them all. So, uh, Noodler's Conrad, I think, is a pen that combines the best of the Noodler's Nib Creeper and the Noodler's Ahab into one single package. So, uh, we'll talk about that between this video and my next one, because yes, there's going to be two Conrad videos, and I'll tell you why. The Conrad comes in several flavors. There is the resin pen, which I happen to have three in my hand right now. That's the original Conrad. Same material as the Creeper and the Ahab. Then Mr. Tardiff came out with the Ebonite. I have three of those. And then he came out with the acrylic, and I've got six of those. And we're not even counting all the pens I've given away over time. So I'm going to limit my discussion today to the ebonite and the acrylic models because I think those two are similar enough that they go together. I'll talk about the resin models in another video and I'll actually do a third video on the brush pen. I think he's a totally different animal and deserves a video all by himself. But anywho, with the, the reason I want to start with the ebonite and the acrylic is it's my favorite. Now you'll see they're just a little bit, maybe about half an inch longer than the resin models. Uh, a little pointy, a um, little flatter at each end, much nicer material. The main difference between ebonite and acrylic is that ebonite's a plastic, or I'm sorry, the acrylic's a plastic, the ebonite's rubber. It's a natural rubber, actually, very old-fashioned type of material. Uh, the feed is ebonite, by the way, also, which I'll come back to that in a little bit. But uh, the shape of your ebonite and the acrylic are very, very similar. I think the acrylic is just a teeny bit longer. And uh, I think during his time with uh, the ebonite, he refined his, Mr. Tardiff, when I say he, refined his manufacturing methods. And uh, by the way, he does not manufacture the pens. He manufactures certain parts for them. So that's a distinction worth making. Uh, the, I bought one of the very first ebonite pens. This is a mottled green pen. And you can just see when I put it next to this uh, Rattler, no not Rattler, Rebellion Red, that uh, the, the parts just fit together better. Uh, there's just more of a match in shape. And, bonus, the ink window doesn't seem to stain in the newer model. Uh, the mottled green one was actually originally a clear ink window. And they've pretty much held the same ink, so uh, I think he must improve the material. Now, when you buy one of these ebonite pens or the acrylic pens, we'll come back to the acrylic here in a bit, uh, and any Conrad, you're getting quite an interesting pen. So you can take it apart. Okay, that's awkward. Uh, it's friction fit, apparently very frictiony in that case. You have a flex nib, a nice feed. It's an ebonite feed, which can be heat set, which might be a topic for another video. Uh, I, uh, I have heat set this one to fit nicely with this nib. Uh, that pulls out. You have a blind cap at the top. You can take apart the entire pen, because I can unscrew the entire piston assembly. And then I can clean the whole pen, I can clean the blind cap, I can soak the feed, I can just go nuts with my cleaning. Uh, I can also take apart the cap. So let's take a look at that. Uh, when I say take apart the cap, I have one pen where this little silver trim ring has fallen off, but for the most part that's not been an issue. I do have a few cases where I've had to take this top off of the cap. Now, with the ebonites, it's not a problem, although I see this one has the issue, but you can't see it because it's an opaque pen. But with more translucent pens, the acrylic ones, you can see where ink gets into this little piece of the cap, which it has on this ebonite one, and uh, stains it. So then you take it apart and you can clean it. 
easy peasy. I have some other pens I'd love to be able to do that and can't figure out how to do it. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Now, uh, the difference between the, that and the acrylic is mainly the acrylic comes in these really nice finishes. Here's the Lake Baikal. This one is uh, Emeralds in the Sun. Root, uh, Forbidden City, which is my personal favorite. Bengal Tiger. Uh, Rattlesnake and Adrenaline. This is the new version. There's an older version. It was a little more jaggedy. John Mung, which uh, I'm ambivalent about that one. Here, Ebonites come in different versions, too. Like, here I have a Sahara Ripple. Uh, I once won a Methuselah's Pinecone uh, for entering one of Mr. Tardif's contests. But anyway, enough about the different uh, variations. What I think is most interesting is how the pen writes. So let's talk about that briefly. And I know this is going to get more than five minutes. I already can see them at 538, even though I'll probably edit some of that out. So, uh... What I like, first of all, is I easy to clean, so that's a given. I like the fact that I can put on different nibs. Uh, when I do the resin, like I said, I'm going to talk about some of the other nibs you can use. Uh, I really love the flex nib, however. Uh, that, that is just amazing. The flex writing, uh, you know, I suppose some purists are going to say, well, that's not flex. Only vintage gold pens are flex. So, you know, whatever. If... That's what you gotta say, that's what you gotta say. But I like the amount of flex this pen has. It goes from a nice fine writing to wide open. Uh, now, of course, you have to slow down when you flex and that's that's just a deal you have to do. Uh, you're gushing a lot of ink out. Now, uh, as far as a couple things I don't like with the pens, uh, one of them is if I drop the pen, ink will splash everywhere inside the cap. Uh, all over the nib, all over the feed, and then it's a mess. So you have to be a little more careful with the pens. I also discovered, kind of the hard way, that apparently if I put it in my pocket where I usually keep a pen, which ironically I don't have one here right now, but uh, you know, if I'm driving down the street, and of course I live in North Dakota so I drive long distances, into the western setting sun, true story, uh, apparently the pen gets super hot and the ink I don't know, the air must expand because I had ink all over in the cap. So don't keep the pen in your pocket when you're driving into the sun. It's a nice lightweight pen. They, uh, the acrylic and the ebonite ones look like nice expensive pens. You know, they're not going to fool anybody and say, Oh, look, that's an Edison or a Mont Blanc or something. But they are very attractive. They catch people's eye. Uh, they're a little more expensive than the resin versions, but I think they're just better made. Um... And I've found if I heat set them, they're even better yet. They're just incredible pens. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. I love having an ink window. That's really important for being able to see it. I, uh, I like the blind cap. I have on some other models of pen accidentally unscrewed the piston, and that's always fun. Like, I love the Lamy 2000, but I wish I had a blind cap on top like these do. So uh, what I'm going to do now, normally I would lay this down and do a size comparison with uh, a Noodler's Conrad. Well, it is a Noodler's Conrad. So what I'm going to do is I'll uh, just show you three of them. I'll put a Conrad Ebonite, uh, a uh, acrylic, and a regular one together. And we'll follow that, of course, if I'm going to demonstrate a flex nib pen, I think I better demonstrate it using Noodler's Apache Sunset, one of the best inks for showing off the capabilities of the flex pen. So, I thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Well, hello. You can just barely see me. What I'm going to do is fill this pen and demonstrate. I've never tried this angle before. So, uh, yeah, this is an experiment. So what I'm using here, this is Noodler's Apache Sunset. I actually used my normal wiping rag as a coffee, <laughs> cleaned up a coffee mess. So I've got a fresh new one here. I'm going to ink up my Bengal Tiger pen with Noodler's Apache Sunset. So what I did is I removed the blind cap. It reveals the regular piston filling mechanism. I'm going to submerge the pen into the ink up above the feed. And I'm going to turn. 
drop the piston down. I'll turn this here so you can see. Nice glare off the reflection. There we go. And then I'll turn it, raise the piston back up. And if I'm trying to do a good job, I'll do that twice, but uh, once will be enough for this video. And I'll wipe her off. And the next thing you should see will be my writing sample. Okay, I'm trying another experiment today. As you can see, this is upside down. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to film this upside down because then I don't have to straddle the camera. And then I can use the magic of iMovie, because I use the cheap stuff, <laughs> in order to edit this video and make it right side up. So, I'm writing with the Noodler's Apache Sunset, which you just saw me fill the pen. I uh, wrote a sample here. I you can see this is a nice ink for demonstrating shading. It goes from almost a yellow color to a very dark orange color. Just very impressive. Now, uh, I picked a pen out of my Conrad's that's not heat set. So this pen is willing to railroad more easily than other pens. And I, but uh, I think that's a good demonstration. Because what you can see here, here is when I go really slow and I'm careful when I flex and I get lots of ink and it doesn't railroad. Over here... I did some railroading on purpose. I don't like railroading, but some people do. Uh, but what it is, is when uh, the surface tension, so when I write, I press down, it spreads the tines apart, and what happens right here is that the surface tension between the tines isn't enough, and there's no ink there. So when you're writing, instead of having ink as you write, you get a gap. Now this pen is inked up, it's a Noodler's Ebonite. It is actually inked with uh, ink called Noodler's Antietam. And uh, the pen itself is a Rebellion Red. It's an Ebonite pen. And you can already see just from a writing sample that it's doing a better job. See, when you heat set, that's the kind of flex you get. Oh, now see, I can railroad, but that happens when I write faster, and I've already done a lot of writing, and I've kind of emptied out the feed. One of the tricks you can do is just wait a minute while the feed refills, see? Or, if you're just in a hurry and you want to do a lot of flexing, turn this little piston down, force some ink into the feed, uh, it'll fill up the fins, and then you can flex for a while until, like I say, it catches up. Uh, flexing uses a lot of ink. The Noodler's feed is designed to feed a lot of ink, but of course, it's not uh, going to keep up. Because if it, if it if it could keep up with a lot of ink, then your regular writing would suffer. So you can experiment with Mr. Tardiff's uh, Scotch Tape Fix. You can experiment with heat setting, which I'll demonstrate in another not, uh, another video. Uh, you can also experiment with something else I'll demonstrate in another video, which is adjusting the feed and the, and the nib placement. So all these things are possibilities for making your pen write just a little bit better. So I said this is one of my favorite pens, and it's true. So I thank you for watching, and we'll see you later.